In headphone enthusiast circles, the original Chord Mojo is probably one of the most popular portable amp DACs of all time. For years, the Mojo has been a reliable option for people who want a high quality DAC amp with an impressive amount of power output, a smooth sound, and all of this packaged in the size of roughly a pack of cards. Now that Chord has released the new Mojo 2, here's a quick overview of the new version compared with the original. The headline feature on the new Mojo 2 is the new DSP core, which allows for the Mojo 2 to perform EQ and crossfeed with a high precision 104 bit hardware engine. The EQ control is divided into four frequency bands only, so it's most useful for making broad changes to the overall tone of a headphone rather than dialing in specific notches and peaks in the frequency response. Everything is controlled by Chord's famous colourful baubles, and since there is no display, menu control is slightly arcane, and only becomes intuitive once you refer to the manual and understand what all the colours and sequences mean. Another long-awaited change is the addition of USB-C, but there's a catch. To maintain compatibility with the Chord Poly streaming unit, the Mojo 2 still preserves the two micro USB connections, and requires a micro USB cable to charge. Now we think having to keep around an extra micro USB charging cable is a bit of a bummer, but at least the Mojo 2 has a more efficient battery that is faster to charge and wastes less power with a new auto shutdown feature. The Mojo 2 now has the Hugo 2's intelligent desktop mode, which detects when the Mojo 2 is being left plugged into the charger and will automatically stop trying to constantly charge the battery. These are all welcome improvements, but how about changes to the sound? Well, the Mojo 2 does feature some changes to the FPGA core and output stage, which are claimed to offer an increase in transparency and timing resolution over the original Mojo. After listening, we feel the Mojo 2 might be subtly clearer and more resolving in sound, but it's not too far off from the detailed, unfatiguing sound that many Mojo owners already love. The Mojo 2 is still a pocket power plant that can drive even low impedance, low sensitivity headphones like the Dan Cluck Audio Aeon 2 to very high volumes without clipping. In fact, I would probably say the Mojo 2 is one of the best portable sources for when you have a headphone with the unusual combination of a very low impedance and very low sensitivity like a lot of planar magnetic headphones. At the same time, the Mojo 2's very low output impedance gives IEMs like the Campfire Audio Andromeda a meatier, surprisingly bassy sound. However, like the Mojo 1, the Mojo 2 still presents a noticeable degree of background noise on an IEM like the Andromeda. All in all, the Mojo 2 is a sensible improvement on the original. Now, not everyone will find all of the new Mojo 2's features useful, but thankfully, the price of the unit has only modestly increased over the first model. Existing Mojo owners probably shouldn't feel the strong need to upgrade unless they are really keen on the new EQ system or the battery improvements. We think plenty of users, new and old, will continue to appreciate the Mojo's combination of power and portability with this second iteration of what is now a classic. Let us know what you think. This is Lachlan for Minidisc TV, and we'll catch you next time.